In James 3, 1 to 12, he treats a new theme, the theme of the tongue. Um, he starts off talking about teachers because what do teachers do? They speak, they use their tongue. But at the end of verse two, he gets to his basic statement. If we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. Could also control ourselves in every other way. James goes on speaking here. He uh, gives several examples. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. First example is a horse guided by a bit in the mouth. He goes on, a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. Doesn't matter which way the wind is blowing, the rudder of a ship controls the direction. Small thing controlling the entire direction of something very large. And then finally, in verse 5, a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. The tongue is a flame of fire. A small tongue of flame can demolish an entire forest. With these three examples, what James is showing us is that uh, size is irrelevant. The tongue, even though it's small, can bless and it can curse. So James goes on. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It's restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so, blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. This is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives. Does a grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. James says the tongue produces what is in our heart. So when it comes to controlling our tongue, if that's a problem that we have, there are two things that we need to do. James hints at them here. He says, first of all, make sure that the purpose and direction of your life is appropriate. That's the bit in the horse's mouth. That's the rudder in the ship. The tongue, what is inside, provides direction. If the purpose of our life is to bless those who are around us, what will come out of our tongue? Blessing. If the purpose of our life is self-centered and seeks only good for ourselves, what comes out of our mouth? Evil. Cursing the other so that we can have a sense of blessing. The second thing that James says here, he hints at, fill your tongue with good things. If you fill it with uh, uh, blessing. There's no room for curses. If your heart is destined to bless, focused on blessing the other, you don't have to worry about the tongue. The tongue will follow the heart. So those two things again, get the purpose and direction of your life in line with God's word and then fill your tongue with good things.